welcome back to another edition of the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. We have a great show for you today. Today we have a phenomenal woman, an awesome woman in the area of media. And when we come back, we're going to talk with Miss Erica Jefferson. And she's going to tell us her life story and how she got started and God's role in it. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. I am your host, Teresia Smith and Quintana. And once again, we do have here Miss Erica Jefferson of Be Inspired Online. Now, Be Inspired is an online magazine, and Erica is an author. She's a speaker, and she does some marvelous things in her ministry and her organization. Erica, I am so glad for you to be here. I'm excited. I'm loving your energy. I, I'm very excited to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, tell me about Be Inspired. What is that? Well, Be Inspired, the concept is just that to inspire women all around the world. The goal in it is really to empower women and okay. let them know that God has a purpose for their life. And so we have different tools, like you said, the magazine and online Bible study and different things that okay. will you know, help to empower women and do just that, inspire them, so. Great, great, great. Now, I know that most people that usually try to empower or help people or they, they've got a calling in their life, it's usually something that happened in their lives for them to want to touch or encourage mm -hmm. others. So what is your story behind Be Inspired? How did that come to be? Well, it actually started uh, back in 08 when I had a vision. There were so many women around me uh -huh. and they all had gifts, finances, health and beauty, so many different gifts. And I was, I thought about it and it was just a shame that their gifts weren't being put out there to help wow. other women. And mm -hmm. so I decided that I was going to come up with a platform. Like I, it was truly God that put it on my heart. Mm -hmm. um, come up with this platform for these women to reach women all around the world. And so I said that, you know, we start some, it sounds good. We're like, <laughs> yeah, we reach women all around the world, but you don't really think that. But it was um, one Thursday, I was sitting in our online Bible study and a lady from the Philippines and a lady from Australia, like wow. women literally from around the world were being impacted. So it didn't come without challenges and I'm still going through challenges. So as you said, my heart um, for the women is, is comes in even stronger as this ministry is growing because I've been faced with even more challenges. As soon as I jumped in it, wow. that's when so many things started taking place in my life. So, Well, what are some of the challenges that you went through? I mean, woo. Woo, I'm sure you can probably write uh, <laughs> pages. Oh, what, yeah. What are some of them? Um, one of the things, and I know a lot of a lot of you out there, you probably can relate to this. <laughs> When you, you get into that call and you're all excited, you're like, yes, I'm going to start this ministry and friends, family, and everyone's looking like, oh, you, <laughs> you're going to yeah. start it. So I definitely dealt with a lot of naysayers. And I know I went through a season, kind of how um, when God called Abraham to leave everything that he was familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I went through a season of having to leave like every, all my closest friends and my family and I relocated. And that was the opportunity for me to really get started. So that was so challenging, okay. um, being pushed away and um, hearing from people that I couldn't do it, but then it kind of motivated me. Okay. And so in fact, the first response that I got when I started to be inspired, um, she wrote, no, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I want to do something with purpose. And Yes, she did. <laughs> and, and bless her heart. I'm not even mad at her. It was it was one of those things that God used to show me that whenever you get started in something for me, when the first response is no, then I get that much more excited because I'm like, OK, God, your hand is on this. And okay. so um, that was one of the biggest challenges where I almost wanted to quit because um, when I say her response, I reached yeah. out to women. So the first person I reached out to. So so how did you how did you reach out to them? Were you asking them for interviews? Were you asking them to write books mm -hmm. or I mean, or not? Not write books, but write a write a, a blog. Yeah, okay. these are my blog writers. Okay, so the first, yeah, writers. I didn't, okay. didn't clarify. Yeah, so my first blog writer that I reached out to, um, <laughs> she said no, no, thank you. Wow. Yeah, and so okay. she actually ended up coming back. You know, a couple of years wow. later, I would love to be featured. You know, now that we're getting thirty thousand plus visitors, yes. wouldn't we all? Uh -huh. But when I had ten people, you know, come to the site, um, not so much. So that was a big challenge, really having to overcome people yes. having to overcome people's influences and not wanting to quit just because you know people didn't really see that because mm -hmm. I feel like once God gives you a vision once he makes it clear in your heart you have to go after it in spite yes. of what people will say so that was a huge challenge for me so how did how did you deal with besides be besides persevering mm -hmm. I mean how else did you deal with rejection mm -hmm. or or you seeing this big vision that God has mm -hmm. for you but others don't 
How else did you deal with that? Uh, you better speak that thing. <laughs> you better speak life. I, just staying in the word. And, okay. and I would have, you know, my vision board where I had to put, you know, just anything that I, I just felt God was speaking to me. I had to constantly, and even now, I still have to constantly remind myself of, you know, God, didn't you say, you know, mm-hmm. this, you know, and, and things that have come to pass already, knowing that, you know, you have to keep repeating it. You I have to keep repeating. We're going to reach, you know, millions of women around yeah. the world. You gotta keep saying it. And so that's one thing that's really helped me to persevere is just staying in the word and really just trying to hear clearly what God is speaking to me to do mm-hmm. so that I don't quit. And so, you know, just being reminded of other stories of other people, yes. you know, that have gone through the challenges and still made it out. So... Awesome. 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 Now, did you have, so you're into, um, helping other women and you're Mm -hmm. into inspiring them and you've got your online magazine and Mm -hmm. you're doing online Bible study. What in your childhood or not even necessarily your childhood, but your background Mm -hmm. that led you to do this? Um, I would say definitely, Challenges, breakups, like um, challenges in my own marriage as, um, yeah, like even, you know, even now Mm -hmm. there, I'm still not absent of these, of these um, things. And so what it's really done for me is help me to look at the bigger picture and not because so often we get caught up in what we're going through that we forget, you know, there's a reason for it. And so as I've been going through, like I said, challenges in my marriage, it seemed like every time I would get ready for an event to go speak every time I would get ready for, I mean, Thursday night Bible study, Mm -hmm. anything like that would, it would just be these intense spiritual attacks to make me want to quit. Give us an example. Oh, kind of personal. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I would say, um, let's see, specifically, um, financial. Mm -hmm. I would say I had financial struggles when I first had to leave um, my parents home, I graduated from school, and then I just knew God was calling me to do something. That's why I um, go back to the story of Abraham. So I actually moved to Raleigh, and coming to Raleigh, I had zero dollars. I just totaled my car, no job, I'm pregnant. I mean, it was just not a good look, and nothing in my circumstance said that you will ever be speaking to anyone. Yes. Like everything said, you need to sit down and you know go somewhere. But every month, like I kid you not, every month something would happen that my rent was able to be paid until I got a job. Like I got a refund check from my college Mm -hmm. and I was no longer a student at that college. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it was, it was just weird, like random things that would start taking place. Exactly. That's what it came down to God's hand on it. And so, um, that would be one of the biggest challenges that I faced like through that season was, um, financial. And with my husband, it's just been a, you know, like even in my marriage, it's just been a challenge. And so, really just having to push through and persevere and look at so oftentimes we can look at the circumstance and quit but I'm learning that the Matthew 6 is what just gets me because that you know I'm like oh yeah seek first the kingdom <laughs> but you know but then we seek first the kingdom we're like yeah God's gonna add all these things to us but we can so soon forget like we can be going through a struggle and forget like do you have clothes on your back mm-hmm. yeah are you eating yeah. yep do you have a roof over your head? You know, and we get so caught up. And so that's really what's kept me to know that even though we go through challenges, it's for a divine purpose. I can now relate to women on a totally different level, yes. you know, from the things that I've gone through. So it's not just saying it because it sounds good. Uh-huh. It's like, no, sister, when I, you know, when yeah. I tell you about, you know, domestic violence or tell you about, you know, different things, it's because I had to walk it out and okay. go through it myself. So. All right. So. Awesome. Man, I cannot (laughs) wait to hear some more of her story. We are going to take a quick break and we'll come right back. All right. Welcome back once again to the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. And we we do have in studio Miss Erica Jefferson of Be Inspired Online. And when we left off, Erica was was talking about um, her being inspired to help Mm -hmm. other women to live out the vision and purpose that God had placed in their lives and some of the trials and tribulations that she had went through. And one mm-hmm. of the things, Erica, I want to pick back up is um, your your going through. Some mm-hmm. of you are going through, and we, we left off, and you you mentioned something about domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you are familiar with personally, or is it something that you had to um, that you know of, or how did that intertwine with your vision in walking out what God gave to you? It's definitely something that I'm familiar with and have experienced. And I've come across a lot of women that experience it. Mm -hmm. And it's something after having gone through this made me more passionate about it because I feel like it's kind of a taboo topic in in the church. It's like a taboo topic in the Christian community. And so 
I, I do believe that, you know, it's something to be learned from it mm-hmm. because even in going through it myself, so a lot of times we get in relationships and, you know, you want to do God's will. Like for me, I want to stick it out. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm fasting. But at certain points, I really do feel like God will speak to you and he'll allow, you know, you to be removed from those types of situations. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that what I would be told, like going through these things, you know, most women, you just, you better pray, you know, you better, and you're like, yeah, you better pray. You better, you, you better pray. But at the same time, you better, you know, like listen for God's response and know that he loves you. Okay. I feel like if so many, if, if we knew like women going through that, if you knew how much God loved you, if you just knew mm-hmm. how much he loved you, then mm-hmm. you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, tolerate that type of stuff. And so I'm no, not some huge advocate for divorce by any mm-hmm. means. And I never thought in a million years, you know, I would have gone through that situation firsthand, yeah. but I would say, you know, be still and listen to God and don't try to, you know, force something and hold on to it when God is probably speaking something else. Do you think that that is an issue or a problem with, with most of us when God has accepted, asked us to do something and we, we step out and we're gung ho. Mm. And do you think sometimes we do what we want, what self want, and not mm. necessarily what he is directing us to do. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> it sounds good. You know, it sounds good on paper with a lot of the things mm-hmm. that we do. And I remember a mentor of mine telling me something that always stands out in my mind. She said, when God says no, his answer isn't going to change. Yes. And so that's in relationships, uh-huh. whatever it is, when we try to force ourselves down a certain path. And I feel like there were things that I, you know, I did my little vision board and put them up there. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, this is going to be great. And sometimes God will allow us to get exactly what it is, you know, that we want to yeah. show us that's not my will for you, it boo. You know, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, that's not my will for you, but now you can go ahead and deal with that, but I'm going to get you out if you continue to seek me. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want people or women to ever beat themselves up because we are human, yeah. human, you know, God knows that. And so a lot of times when we go through those situations, for me, it still took spiritual growth going through that. Like, you know, sometimes we have to to grow and not feel like if we don't make the perfect decision, we can't make a decision. Sometimes you just have to go through the fire because you're going to come out stronger and because it's for a divine purpose. And because I can now talk to women that are going through that. And as I said, I'm not just saying it because it you know, sounds really cute or, you know, it's really empowering. Like, no, mm-hmm. I can say it because I had to go through it. And, and you, so yeah. and you've walked the shoes. So yeah. You know the path. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, you know, I sit and and I've, you know, I, I've I've had to go through, you know, you're, you're one of those people. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, when God gives you a vision, mm. okay, you're gung ho, you're excited, and man, you just want to go out and just start busting doors down and just <laughs> doing things. Yeah. And sometimes there are like those aha moments, and sometimes there are like those, oh my gosh, you're just crying boohoo and type moments. <laughs> Have you had lots of those? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, um, I think about it like this. You know how the word says, when God blesses us, he has no sorrow to it. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of us, we want to be blessed, but we don't want that God kind of blessing because he's not going to put you up on some platform uh-huh. and, you know, cause you and, you know, God to be put to shame yes. by your actions. And so we, sometimes we have to go through that fire. Like you said, we got to have those boohoo moments mm-hmm. balled up in a corner crying, mm-hmm. you know, to come out on top. But it's all things, if we truly believe that all things are working together for the good, then you can get through it. Yes. But as you said, like, um, you know, that initial vision, we can get excited yeah. about that vision. Woo! <laughs> and then you find out, okay, you need to do this legally. So you need to develop a business plan. You know, you need to register this. You need to, you know, when all the, the intricate details come about and the challenges, that's when a lot of people give up. That's when a lot of people quit. But have you ever felt like giving up? Oh, yeah. Really? Like what? Last week? No. <laughs> No, I definitely. It, it's, it, and that's why um, when you when you go after something, yes. you know, I always try to tell women you need to just be clear. What is God calling you to do? Because I don't know if you've seen uh, Tyler Perry put out this this awesome video that I absolutely loved, uh-huh. actually, on um, success okay. and how, you know, a lot of people always ask him, you know, how did you get your success? Uh-huh. And he said he went through years with 30 people. That's it. I he saw, he saw, yeah. 30 yeah. people. And I knew all of them showing yes. up. 
But if you, you know, so yeah. we, if you go through this season and you're in, impatient and you're in a rush to see the big vision, if you don't see that, then you quit. If you don't know why you're going through it, mm-hmm. you'll quit. Like I was, um, you know, the story of Esther. Yes. She went through that. And if most people, if their entire family was threatened death and themselves included, they're going to quit, cry, and then probably end up dead. Yeah. But when you know the core of it, when you know the reason why that it's not about you, mm-hmm. that God gave you this vision for a reason and ultimately it's for his glory, then that's where that tenacity comes. And that's the only reason I can't quit. Yes. Because so many times when I want to quit, I always have that core, that remembrance of this is not about you, Erica. Oh my gosh, you that know? is so true. You know, <laughs> that is so true. And and I think that we need to realize that that mm. we who are walking out this vision, it's mm. not about us. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is so not about us. Mm-hmm. It is about God being glorified. Oh yeah. You know, that is so true. So my question to you is, um, where do you see be inspired going? Mm. What is what is your <laughs> well, I don't want to say your vision, but yeah. what is the God what is the vision that God gave you for be inspired if you would want to share? Okay. Or, you know. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you guys <laughs> the inside scoop. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anyone. No. I, I definitely see it's just always been on my heart that be inspired would reach millions of women around the world. And so I see it growing to that point where the magazine, um, one vision that I've had, I don't know, you know, if the Lord says the same, you know, it'll happen, but walking through Walmart and seeing all these magazines with a whole bunch of just, mm, you know, I don't want to read that kind of stuff to see this magazine, to see, be inspired in the, you know, the aisles of the grocery store and see something that's empowering, highlighting women like yourself, you know, seeing you on the cover of the magazine. And when people go to read your story, it's not something that makes them have low self-esteem because they don't have enough, but it's something that inspires them. So that's one of the big, uh, that's one of the sneak peeks. Oh, you know? wow. <laughs> no, I am, you know, I'm just praying blessings over you because I believe that it can happen. Wow. You know, I believe that it can happen. I believe that if you continue to walk in what God has, you know, ordained for you, he's mm. already called you to it. And what mm-hmm. you said was yes, and you stepped out and you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And there are going to be trials, there are going to be tribulations, there are going to be issues, there are going to be problems, there may be finances, there are going to be people that are going to be there for you and not there for you. Um, but if you just keep stepping forward, he's always going to be there. I know oh, that's right. I received that. I, I, know. I can wait to see your magazine. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so excited. <laughs> All right. We're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more with Erica and she's going to introduce her new book. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. Okay. So we've got here Miss Erica Jefferson. And remember, I told you at the beginning that she is also an author. Well, we have her book here and it is called Jump Start Your Dream. Okay. So we're going to have Erica tell us some more about her book. Okay. Okay, So it's only the best book ever on earth. So if you don't have a copy, you definitely got to go to jumpstartyourdream.com. No, this book. Now, this is definitely an example of what I've gone through and just pour my heart out because I actually went to NC State for all you Raleigh people. Go Wolfpack. Um, But uh, yeah, I went to NC State and I found myself in a place where I was forcing myself down this path to become a lawyer and please, you know, everyone around me. Mm -hmm. And I never once just took the time to say, God, you know, what are you calling me to do? And I feel like a lot of people do that, especially, you know, going into college where you're, you know, immediately choose a career and everything or even coming out and trying to please people. So Jumpstart Your Dream is all about empowering people to understand what it is they're called to do, Mm -hmm. understanding your purpose. And if you already know what it is that you're called to do, just getting that motivation and that encouragement to step it on out. And so I share things, you know, like the dream killers, those people that, uh, how to identify those people in your life that are going to stop you and crush your dream. I talk about just different steps and I really try to make it practical. So if you read the book, it's almost like we're talking, you know, I'm not, getting all the fancy words and stuff and something that's going to bore you. But it's really as if I'm just sitting down and talking to you and sharing tools that I've seen many successful people, people that have grown in their ministry and their careers and in different things, tools that they've applied to really start walking on purpose. And so okay. that's what it is. Is about. there anything that you would like to read really briefly about them? Sure. Okay. I think we can, let's read about the dream killers. Cause okay. I believe, you well, know, yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Hopefully I can find it very fast. Let's see. And so how long did it take you to um, to put your book out? Man, um, 
This is one of those things uh, I ended up staying uh, actually like a couple of weeks. Okay. Like I had the idea for, I'm one of those like, let's go. Yeah. Like, let's not talk about it. If you're going to do it, just do it. Yeah. So a couple of weeks, I just had to close myself off in a little corner, typed it out, yeah. re-edited everything. So awesome. yeah, it didn't take a whole lot of time. Okay. So these are symptoms of dream killers. I want you and you know everyone listening to kind of line up anyone that you know and see if they're a dream killer for you. Oh, uh, so I'll pull out, yeah, here's our list. My handy dandy checklist for dream killers. They're more interested in talking to you when things in your life are going sour rather than good. You know those people, they get excited. Oh my God, you're going through a divorce. How you doing, girl? You know, can't celebrate your victories. They're rarely encouraging to your dreams, but instead they list, list off reasons why your ideas are silly or unattainable. Wow. Mm. They have difficulty celebrating your blessings. Dream killer. Dream killer. <laughs> they constantly compare your progress to theirs, mm -hmm. just competing all the time. They're much faster to point out negative rather than positive things about you. After hanging around these people, you feel bad about yourself. And you also find yourself compromising what you believe in, your core values to fit in with them. Wow. So though, that's just a little snippet. I go more into detail, but uh -huh. dream killers, you got to get rid of them. Like. Oh. Distance yeah. yourself. So. so the question <laughs> is, my viewers, do you have any dream killers around you? And I know we're sitting here and we're laughing, but the real truth is you've got to ask yourself this question. Do you have dream killers in your life? Because I know that some of you sitting out there, God has called you to do mighty things, wonderful things, great things. And you're hanging around people that are not speaking into you. You're hanging around people that may not believe in you. You're listening to what they're having to say. And like Miss Erica was saying, they're dream killers. Now, Erica, mm. if you could just speak some words of encouragement to that woman, that man that's sitting on that couch, that's looking at their show on their computer, and just mm. speak into them and let them know what they can do to step out and do what God has asked of them to do. Okay. Well, I first would say it's not a coincidence that you tuned in today. I believe that, you know, through my life, I learned none of this stuff is a coincidence. So I want to encourage you that if you have breath in your body, you're breathing right now. That means you're living. And I'm guessing that you are because you're watching this. And so that means that God saw it fit for you to see another day. And I think it's so easy for us to forget how short our time is here on this earth. And so I'm encouraging you to not spend another day doing anything less than what God has called you to do. And many times we have challenges. You may be going through challenges and you think that's all the more reason for you to quit and give up, but it's not. Think about those very things that come natural to you. What are those things that you do effortlessly? What is something that God's put on your heart? Because usually he won't, you know, reveal the huge big picture. And a lot of times we want the big picture, like, Lord, just show me, you know, 20, 25 years out. But he'll tell you 20, 25 days out or 20, 25 minutes out. And so I want you, this is my challenge for you, uh, the vision coach coming out. My challenge for you is to think about that thing that's been on your heart. What is it? Whether it was to organize your little dirty closet whether it was to call that friend, apologize, what is that thing that's really been on your heart? I promise when you do it, God is going to give you the next step. It just starts with small steps. Mm -hmm. So know that you have a purpose. Know that your, your being here is not a coincidence. God loves you. He has a calling on your life and it's up to you to go out and do it. So those are my words of encouragement for you that are watching. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Erica. Thank for you. Being on the show. You're a wonderful guest, and I truly enjoyed having uh, thank you. Thank you. And much blessings upon you and the ministry and everything that God has placed in your life. Thank you. And so, my viewers, wherever you are, in the on your couch or on your computer, I am so glad that you're here. I hope that you were able to take some of what Erica has mentioned and apply it to your life. Don't just sit there. I want you to move. I want you to go in your little secret closet while you're driving in your car and I want you to talk to God and tell him, God, just say, God, I'm scared, but okay, God, I want to do this. I want to serve you. So I want you to join me next time on the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show and come to be inspired and to be blessed. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.